For the setting of this simulation model, one needs a delivery bit, or alternatively a small table, a waterproof pelvic mannequin, an inflatable swimming pool, one and a half to two liters of lukewarm water, a pipe of forceps if one wants to practice a forceps delivery on the aftercoming head, a lubricant silicone spray, a fetal mannequin, thin plastic bags, for example dustbin bags, and a sufficient amount of towels. The instructor installs the pelvic mannequin on the edge of the table or on the delivery bed as appropriate. The mannequin must be able to be installed in the lithotomy position. The pelvic mannequin we used is a prompt trainer. While not designed for this purpose, the materials used are waterproof. The fetal mannequin is of an approximative size and weight of a term neonate. It is important for the fetal mannequin to have flexible joints in the shoulders, elbows, hips and knees in order to realistically mimic the real-life manipulations that come with breech extraction. Prior to the exercise, the landmarks for recognition of fetal feet from hands can be pointed out to the candidate, being a foot having a firm heel with toes lying on a straight line. A hand does not have a heel and can be grasped as for greeting and fingertips are not in a straight line. Palpation of the elbow indicates a pointy protuberance formed by the olecranon, which is not the case at the knee, where a small dip is felt. In order to protect the instructor from getting excessively wet at the exercise, the pelvic mannequin is slightly tilted towards the edge of the table. The fetal mannequin is then lubricated with a silicone gel or spray. The fetal mannequin is then inserted in a frank breech position into a thin plastic dustbin bag which is filled with 2 litres of lukewarm water in order to mimic intact membranes and amniotic fluid at body temperature. The plastic bag is closed. One can demonstrate before the exercise how to feel and reach for the fetal feet through intact membranes, how to flex the knee by manipulating it with the finger and how to recognize feet from hands by palpation through intact membranes. Both instructor and candidate are advised to protect themselves with a waterproof apron. The candidate is advised to remove shoes and socks. The plastic bag with water and fetal mannequin are inserted into the pelvic mannequin in a breech or transverse position as preferred. The hand of the candidate is lubricated. In real life, maternal pain relief and acute tocolysis facilitate palpation of the fetal parts by relaxing the uterus. Abdominal ultrasounds prior to the procedure can help to determine the exact fetal position. Attention is paid to the location of the fetal back and abdomen, as well as the position of the feet. It permits to select which hand of the candidate will be internal and which will be the external hand. The obstetrician should enter the maternal pelvis with the hand on the same side of the fetal abdomen. This might be counter nature to the obstetrician's dexterity, as it is not always a dominant hand. The mannequin is then put in the lithotomy position, and the instructor simply supports the plastic bag containing the fetal mannequin and water. As instructed before, the obstetrician enters the pelvis with the hand that is on the same side as the fetal abdomen after lubrication. The external or abdominal hand initially supports the fundus and later can assist in rotating the fetus in the longitudinal lie. This setting allows the candidate to palpate the fetal feet through intact membranes. Both feet or the anterior foot is grasped, flexed and pulled through the intact membranes. During this procedure the membranes will rupture spontaneously. The anterior leg is chosen to prevent impaction of the fetal breech on the maternal symphysis. Further delivery is conducted as in the appropriate technique for assisted breech delivery. If necessary, the posterior leg can be delivered by abduction, thus inducing spontaneous flexion of the knee. Attention is paid to keep the fetal back in upright position. Once the scapulae are visible, the shoulders are delivered. 
with appropriate technique, being lovesat maneuver as demonstrated here, or alternatively the classic maneuver or Muller's maneuver. The fetus is then allowed to sit until the nape of the neck is born. It will then ride on the arm of the obstetrician and the Morisot's Mellivite maneuver is initiated. With the fetal body riding on the obstetrician's arm, the fingers of both hands promote flexion of the fetal head and limit the traction. Final flexion is promoted by suprapubic impression. In case of extended arms, one can attempt to bring down the posterior arm with the classical maneuver as an alternative to Lovsett's maneuver. Once the scapulae are visible, the operator grabs the fetal feet with the hand on the same side as the fetal abdomen and lifts them over the ipsilateral mother's groin. The fetal abdomen then faces the mother's abdomen. It promotes descent of the posterior shoulder. With the other hand, the operator rises along the fetal back and shoulder to splint the humerus. By flexing the elbow, the arm is swiped over the fetal face and chest. The feet are then grasped by the other hand and pulled down obliquely to the opposite side of the maternal groin. The fetal back then points towards the mother's back, permitting mobilization of the anterior arm under the symphysis. A nuchal arm is best freed by rotating the fetal body in the direction in which the fetal fingertips are pointing. The occiput then slips past the forearm.